Okay. It's so good to be here with you guys, Hilda and Peggy, in your new place, in Dune Village, right? Right. And this is in the settlement or town of, what's it called, Pine? Pine Town. Pine Town. I think I know why that's called that. Oh. <laughs> We had a little trouble finding you guys, but we're Same. here. So, well, this is going back home, okay? So let's talk about back home for a moment. And, uh, and take me back to when you and Leora, when you guys and Leora used to be at, at the church in Newark. Mm -hmm. What was the name of that church? Kilburn. Kilburn That's Presbyterian oh, Church. Oh, Kilburn. Kilburn Presbyterian Church. That's right. Yeah. And tell me about your friendship. It's a, it's a lovely story, I think. We met when we were, well, actually we knew each other from school when we were about 11. And um, some of the girls from school were at the place where we were having a holiday. And they said, why don't you come to our church? And I said, oh, I don't know. She said, Try it. You'll enjoy it. And so I started going to Kilburn, and I was in Leora Sunday School class uh, and got to know her better. And after about a year or so, um, she found the Lord as her personal Savior and uh, took an interest in me and invited me to the church, and I heard the gospel message. And I also gave my life to the Lord. And from then on, we were... Okay, so we're starting to fresh. You it's know, fine. you know, tight shot? Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. This shot okay. is great. All right. Peggy, you were saying that Leora helped you find the Lord mm -hmm. when you were 11? 15. 15? Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, is it still, it's still noisy? It shouldn't be that noisy. We'll right. open the window. Open. Okay. We were saying, <laughs> after that interruption, so at 15, Leora helped you guys, or you find the Lord. And now, Hilda, how about you? When did you? No, I was saved as a child, five years old, at my mother's knee. <laughs> but. Uh, and then when did you meet Leora? I would, when, I okay, think so we were about 27. That's right. When, when, when did you meet Leora? Uh, well, I don't remember what year it was. I was 27 years old at the time, and I had been driving a, an evangelist back and forth to our church in New York City. And we went to Elizabeth, New Jersey, one Monday night when there was no service. And uh, in Elizabeth, we heard Gypsy Smith speak. Mm. And after the meeting, who should we bump into but Leora and Peggy? And uh, they were friends of this evangelist, Lady Evangelist, whom we knew. She introduced us. And then they came to New York, I think the following day or so, or very shortly after that. And we became friends from that time on. <laughs> oh, that's great. And then when did you guys get a call to go to the mission field? You, well, you can come out of the two shot here, too. We'll put both of you on camera. You want to <laughs> answer that talk. first? You go. better go first, I think. Uh -huh. I was brought up more or less in a missions family. I have I had a sister who was a missionary in Belgian Congo, and we entertained a lot of missionaries in the family. And from the time I was about two, I talked about going to the mission field, so much so I was interested in the Japanese. My f family all thought I would someday go to Japan as a missionary. But then as I grew up, uh, more and more I realized that that was the call on my life. And uh, I just always felt it. And I think it was in about 1938 that I applied for mission appointment and, then, and uh, I was approved and I had already met you mm -hmm. at that time hadn't I yes 
and I was approved by my district. And it looked at first like I was going to be appointed to go to Gold Coast. Then World War II broke out in the meantime, and I was delayed at home for seven years. And then I was asked to go to uh, South Africa to help a widow uh, who was working alone in South Africa, and that's what I did. And then how did you guys get hooked up, Peggy? How did you and Hilda get hooked up to go to the mission field together? Oh, okay. That's a long story. I'll cut it short. Cut it down a little bit, yeah. <laughs> uh, Hilda, of course, was my friend, and before she left for Africa, she wrote me a letter and uh, enclosed a $5 bill, which in those days was a lot of money, <laughs> and said, when I get to Africa, you save your money, open a bank account and save your money, and come and visit me. And miraculously, it happened that way. Uh, I went for a year, I took off from a year, uh, a year from my job, and went to Africa to be with Hilda. And immediately I jumped into the work with her as much as I was able to, taught Sunday school and so forth. And on the way home, after a year, I was praying about what was going to happen when I got home, God's plan for my life. And very distinctly, the Lord spoke to me, not in an audible voice, but said, I want you to go back where you come from, to Africa. And so when I arrived back in New York, I knew what my future was going to be. But nobody else knew it. And first off, I had to phone um, the FBI where I was working and resign my job and so on, go through. And in a year, I was on my way back, wow. obviously in the Lord's plan. And this was with? This was in uh, 1949. 1949. And when, with the church? Pardon? What church was this? Uh, Bethel's Assemblies of God. So you came as Assembly of God missionaries? Right, both of us. And you came to Lesotho? And we went to Lesotho. Why Lesotho? Uh, because the Lord sent us there, I think, is the briefest answer. Hilda had been there studying the, the language, and she felt that the Lord wanted her to transfer from Johannesburg to Lesotho. And she wrote to me, and said, I think we had been, uh, it had been planned that we work together. And she said, pray that the Lord will show you whether or not it's his plan for us to go to Lesotho. Well, I, on Friday, I received a letter from the mission saying, uh, we want you to go to Lesotho and do evangelistic work there. And Hilda was going to be in Joburg, and so I thought, oh, how can I ever do it? A new missionary on a new field, and anyway, I prayed desperately. And then on Monday, Hilda's letter came, so that explained the whole thing. Great. And then, Hilda. Did you, yes. by any chance, Bill, did you go to Alexander Township? No. You didn't? Unfortunately. Well, that's a horrible place. It's... Uh, well known for its crime and everything is one of the worst places in Joburg at the moment and when the first Sunday that Peggy came to Joburg on her visit she walked into Alexander Township alone to conduct a Sunday school class with the help of an interpreter hmm. Pretty brave, that huh? was her that no, was her first no. experience. It was calm and quiet, and, uh, and it was just lovely. And the, no, the same no, no, they didn't have those problems and these back days, in those days. We wouldn't dare drive in alone, uh, you know. If the uh, if we had the opportunity, yeah. we'd be afraid to drive in well, alone. You, we were just in Umlazi. We were just up there in, in Umlazi, mm. and we had a nice time. Good. Uh -huh. Scenes of people and yeah. people yeah. were very yeah. friendly and well, We had a great time. Yeah. Most of the people are friendly and yeah. loving and yeah. it's just the few that spoil it. Yeah. But tell me about Lesotho. I mean, was it really undeveloped when you first came? I mean, what was it like? 
It was very rough country. Well, how do you describe it, Peggy? Tell about your first trip up to Mount Tabor when you thought, if I live here a year, it'll be good if I stick it out this long. We went right from Cape Town, where I landed, to Lesotho by car. Hilda was driving me. And it was so uh, isolated and just mountains. Wherever you look was just mountains. But I didn't see any people. And I said to Hilda, why in the world are you taking me to this place? Uh, but we made it, and after a while, of course, the people came. And so there were plenty of people to minister to. But I just, I, it was so strange. I, I, was, I felt so isolated and so lonesome. Uh, and I didn't understand the culture. And I just prayed, Lord, let me last for one year. I think it won't be such a shame for me to go <laughs> home and fail after a year. Just, just help me out for a year. And at the end of the year, I wouldn't have gone home for anything. <laughs> wow. The Lord just gave me a love for the place and a love for the people. So we were there 23 years. Mm. How about for you, Tonto? What, what was it like? What, did you I, went, I went to Lesotho first to study the language. All of our mission, missionaries in our particular area all spoke Zulu or had studied Zulu or Koza, but nobody knew Sasutu. So uh, they decided it would be good for someone to learn Sasutu. And they sent me up to a Swiss mission station in Lesotho, where I studied for six months. And I loved every minute of it. Really? Yeah, I really lonely, loved it. Yeah. And the missionary that was there, uh, uh, Trudy Cast. Uh, I'm sure all of the folks, especially Leora, will remember Trudy's name, is still living. She's 102 years old. Wow. And she was at my 90th birthday party last month. Oh, <laughs> Can you believe goodness. it? <laughs> mm. Good for her. Good yeah. for you. Has <laughs> all her, she has all her faculties. <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> well, tell, tell me something in, Les, in uh, the Sesotho, is it? Yeah, Sesotho. Sesotho. Yeah, Lesotho. It was Basutoland when we first went there. Yeah. And then when they got their independence, they changed the, oh, the to their old name, Lesotho. Now, the country is Lesotho. The language is Sesotho. One person is a Mosotho, and plural is Basutu. So tell me something in Sesutu. Say, this is a beautiful country, and I hope you come to see this sometime. Uh, Lefasi la Lesutu. Ke Lefasi la Mudimo. Don't you want to say something? Che, che le <laughs> What is that? She I've forgot. forgotten the language. <laughs> You've forgotten the language. Mm. I've been away since 73 and uh, not speaking it at all. Yeah. There are no so. Basutu or very few in Natal. And uh, so strangely you, enough, that's where you went next? we're in Natal now, oh, you right. see, okay. KwaZulu Natal. Natal. And uh, strangely enough, there is one young woman who works here at Dune Village who is a Masutu. And I don't know how she found us, but she found us, and now we are like her old, long-lost grandmothers. She comes and visits us all the time <laughs> just to hear a little bit of Sasutu, even though it's very faulty at this point because we haven't spoken Sasutu since 1974. <laughs> wow. But you established a lot of schools up there, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Tell me, how many schools did you establish? Did schools, you? we had 52 Sunday schools. We only had one herd boys school, and we did not have a government school for the children. Oh. So. And you started the Ulrich Jelinek Center? Or you yeah. Bible School. <clears throat> yeah. 
Well, we were wanting to build a Bible school, and uh, in memory of Ulrich, Leora uh, paid all the expenses in building that school. Great, yeah. And you guys knew the king, right? <laughs> he <laughs> was me, a little boy. Tell that, me about that. No, we didn't know the king. Would you, you say we met him? Yeah. I wouldn't say we knew him. You we mean knew the present king? Yeah. The present king. He was just a little boy. Now, I had apparently told my testimony in a chapel service at the Bible school. And one of our teachers said he couldn't understand that a child five years old could repent and be saved the way I told I had been saved at my mother's knee. She spanked me into the kingdom, I tell you. But <laughs> at any rate, <laughs> uh, this man just couldn't understand it. But our students used to go to the palace every Wednesday night to hold a prayer meeting. And the present king was a little boy of about five, and he was, went every Wednesday night. And one night he was really under real conviction of the Holy Spirit and he broke down and wept and wept and wept. The next morning this teacher came to school and spoke in chapel and he said, I never believed Matabo's testimony about being saved when she was five years old. You're Matabo. I'm Matabo, yeah. yes. And he said, but last night when I saw Mohatu, he was called Mohatu at that time, the king was, and uh, when I saw Mohatu break down and cry and give his heart to the Lord, then I believed Matabo's story. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. But the father we didn't really know. Didn't. We, knew, we knew his mother. She was a fine Christian, visited us in our home, but... Um, well, you, you've you loved this area, Africa, Lesotho, KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa, so much, you guys have stayed. Yeah. I mean, are you South Africans? No. I think, in a way, I think we are more South African than American. We feel more at home, I think, in this country. At home, we just feel out of place. We feel like African curios <laughs> when we're home. It's a strange feeling. Everybody treats us like company, don't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, we're never quite at home. It's strange, even with our own people. Wow. <laughs> so the, this is where you belong. Yes. Yeah. We feel that way. God has given us a real love for Africa, so much so that when we see all the crime and things on television, our hearts ache for the country. Mm. Yeah, that's sad. Yeah, well, it sad. is. I, I've talked to a number of people, though, that have a lot of hope mm -hmm. for yeah. South Africa. Well, that's the only thing you can have. Get too discouraging, but the Lord is able. And he loves the African people far more than we do. Tell me um, about the, the years that you guys have written to Leora. I mean, how, how many letters have you all exchanged? Oh, dear. I have no idea. But I think she would know. <laughs> I do, because she kept all of our letters for years and years. So she'd have a better idea about it than we. She's, she's been a wonderful friend to us and to the mission, supported it. The, and the, the Assemblies of God is a church that's been growing still very strong, right? Yes. How come? Why does the Assemblies of God church just keep growing? Well, why does anything grow spiritually? It's because of prayer and the work of the Holy Spirit, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Evidently. Yeah.
But there's a lot of other Now there are there. a lot of, there are a lot of uh, very live churches here in South Africa. I don't know if you uh, have, you probably haven't come across them. But we've been amazed since we've been here at Dune Village to see how many of the nursing sisters are truly born again Christians. Mm. And I went to a fellowship meeting here in the little sanctuary that they have the other day, and there must have been 30 of the residents here at that meeting. And I would have judged that most of them are born again, all different denominations. Wow. It's well, really great. tremendous. Well, that's encouraging, huh? Yeah. Well, is there anything you want to say to Leora? Leora, you should be here right now. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting really <laughs> lonesome. Lord bless you. We think of you and pray for you every day. Hilda? Uh, I say ditto to what Peggy has said. And we miss hearing from you, Leora, but we don't miss praying for you. We remember you every single night. God bless. Mm -hmm. Thanks, you guys, very much. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, well, let's, 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 let's take, take a wide shot. I was going to say, yeah. then take a wide shot. Okay, just keep talking to them. I'm talking to you because Natty is still recording here. We're, uh, he's getting some some extra shots of us as we're talking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, does Sorry. Leora, does Leora write letters at all these days? Would you mind to put your hands together as you have been doing? Just put it. Well, I, but I won't, I won't edit this. Yeah. You know, I won't edit this. Yeah, then I'll edit. No, no, we'll just send this as it is. Oh, okay. So you can, you can pan across and, okay. and show us here. The, uh, um, the thing about Africa that impresses me, at least South Africa, is how many Christians there are. I mean, there's a... Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And I, you know, I've met a some Baptists, and there are not that many Baptists here, but I wound up flying from uh, Johannesburg to, to Durban here with a fellow who's a very dedicated, committed Christian, Baptist, yeah. layman, sure, you know, who has great hope for South Africa. Good. And, uh, There's a tremendous Baptist church right here in Westville, uh -huh. really, and it's growing. And we have just recently met the wife of the uh, minister who started that church. She is a resident here at uh -huh. Dune Village. Well, those Baptists aren't bad people, are they? Mm. Oh, they're no. wonderful <laughs> people. <laughs> they're, and the uh, the present pastor is definitely a spirit-filled man. Great. Yeah. yeah. Wow. As somebody down in the on the waterfront in a uh, in a mission down there said, a happy clapping. Yeah, well, that's what they call all of the charismatics happy clappies here. <laughs> Was that new to you, I that expression? Heard that expression before. Oh, right, hadn't you? But right away I knew what he meant. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. Happy clappy, yeah. That was, uh, there are a lot of charismatics around and big charismatic churches. Wow, yeah. They're building one right in Hillcrest, right near where we lived. Well, it's a beautiful area, but it's also, it's, this is like, uh, in the summertime, this must be like Calcutta in terms of how hot it gets here, isn't it? Calcutta, what? I don't know much about that. Well, what? it's very hot and very humid. Oh, this and part Durban would be, uh, beastly in the summer. Ah, okay. And Pine Town is a little bit higher, so it's not quite so bad. Yeah. And Hillcrest is really known as the mist belt, and it gets very cold there. Mm. Very cold. And it's much cooler in summer there than it is mm. even here in uh, yeah. okay. Pine Town. Yeah. I forget where I live. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, you guys. It's great to see you here. Wow. Thank you, and we appreciate your coming, especially when we know how busy you are. Okay. Yes. Now, stand up for a second. Nadia, shut down for a second. You brought that for our visitors, huh? <laughs> be careful now, you're going to be on television. <laughs> Take the tin, come back. Yes, come back and bring some more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she should take the. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. So, Maddie, just.
pan over the. What is this right here? The. Uh, it's a needlepoint picture. But what is it of? Oh, it's just oh, the Cape Town. It's the Cape, what they call a Cape Cottage. Uh huh. Uh, that's a true Cape Cottage, then. Right? Yeah, that's a real. Yeah. That just a print of a Cape Cottage. Yeah. Well. What, Natty? What if you just went handheld and uh, and let let them show me a couple things in here, and then we'll we'll go. Okay. Tell us. Tell us. Tell us a little bit. It, right here, you have some uh, some of these. Heads that are bookends, are these from Lesotho? Oh, they're, oh. they're African heads. African they're, they're they are from Nigeria. Oh, Nigeria. They're from Nigeria, okay. yeah. Wow. Well, and I have a picture here. Who's that, that? That's my mom and my sister and I, Mary Brown. That's Mary and you. Yeah. Wow. That's right. During the First World War. During the First World War? Yeah. I didn't know you guys fought in the First World War. You didn't. <laughs> fought during the First World War, right? <laughs> oh, that's great. That's lovely. And I saw there was another one over there of you and, that, and Mary, yes. too. Yes, that unfortunately I take all the space. Yeah. Well, this is a great place, you guys. You got this. What you do got, you tell me? What do you, you think You got the of living it? room. You got the yeah. living room here, and you have your bedroom in there. Right. And you have a lot of the things that I assume came, you know, from. <laughs> From your other house? Well, yeah. uh, just almost everything except that table and chairs. A friend made yeah. that for us, but this has all come from our home. Yeah. We both had large beds in our own home, but uh, we had to size, downsize to single beds. <laughs> so this is so. the downsized version. This, yeah. mm, we have downsized. Right. Well, let's all wave at the folks back home. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay. Come and see us. These are the, your African curios. <laughs> but they're more than curios. <laughs> we ready to wave again? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Bye. We are in Africa. <laughs> Natty, come out here. Just let that run and come out here and say hi to the folks. <laughs> yeah, no, come, come on. on. <laughs> come on. It's all right. <laughs> uh, well, you must greet us. This is Natty, our cameraman. Bye. <laughs> hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. cute. All right, you guys. Bye bye. You're Great going to see so you. Soon. Yeah, Here, we go. Have, have some Milo. <laughs> some what is it called? It's Milo. Is Milo. that for us? That's Milo. Yeah. I thought sure. that was for you guys. No, that's all right. You have it, please. Oh, come on. We yeah.